Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about React's Pure component. And this one is all about performance optimization. We're going to look at when we should use Pure component, and how it differs from the regular React component. So I think it'd be best to get started with an example, so we can see the issue that Pure component can help solve. So as you can see here, I've set up two different files, or two different components. We have our parent app.js component here, on the left and we have our child component here on the right. And you can see that these are both class-based components, so we're going to work with state in both of these components. So let's get into our parent app component first. Let's go and add some state to it. We'll create a name property, and we'll initialize it to the name Ginger. And then let's come into our div, and let's display that name as an H1. So in our curly brackets, we'll do this.state.name, and then what we're going to do with this component is we're going to create a button where every time we click, we're going to append an exclamation mark onto the name. So let's create our button. We'll give it some text content. We'll say add exclamation. We'll make our onClick event handler. And we're going to assign that to a function which we're going to write in a second, in which we'll call add exclamation. So let's come up here above our render and let's write out that function now. So we'll say add exclamation is going to equal an arrow function. And in this function, all we're going to do is we're going to call this.setState. And for that name property, we're going to take this.state.name. And every time we click, we're going to append an exclamation mark. So let's flip over to the browser, make sure that that's working so far. And there we see our h1, the name Ginger. Let's click the button. And there we see that exclamation mark being appended each time we click. So the child component is going to be very similar to our app component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all this code, and I'm going to paste it into child. And in the child component, we're also going to have a name property on the state. We'll set this one's default value to posh. And instead of add exclamation, we're going to write a function called add question mark. And of course, we'll append a question mark instead of an exclamation mark. Now in our render, we're going to do the exact same thing we did in app. So we can paste that code in. And instead of calling add exclamation, we're going to call add question mark here. We'll say add question mark. Let's flip over the browser, and now we should see these two components. Actually, what we have to do, first we have to import child, right, into app.js. So let's do that. Import child from dot slash child, and we're going to bring it in down here as a child component. Cool, now we should see both of these components in the browser. Okay, and we see them ginger, and we have posh, we have add exclamation for ginger, and then we have add question mark for posh. So these are two separate components, this one being a child component of this one. Now here's the big question. When I click on this button, the app component is going to re-render because its state is changing. However, when I click that button, does the child component need to re-render as well? Well, in this case, the answer would be no. There's no need for it to re-render because nothing that we're doing here is changing any state or props in child. But now let's come into child, and in our render method, let's console log out the word rendering. Actually, we'll say rendering from child. And then we'll go back to the browser, and we'll click on this button to add an exclamation mark to the name Ginger. And let's see when this child component gets re-rendered. Now so far you can see that we have rendering from child once here in the console. And that's because both components have mounted. But let's go ahead and let's click add exclamation on the parent app component, and take a look in the console. Rendering from child. Rendering from child two times three times, four times, five times. So what we can see here is that even though there's no change being made here to posh or the child component, it's still re-rendering each time we make a change to the parent component. And in this simple contrived example, there's absolutely no reason to be re-rendering posh. But the thing is, it is going to re-render because it's a child component of the parent component here. And this is where pure component comes into play. So we've seen what the potential performance issue is. So let's go back to VS Code and see how we can solve this. 
Well, in the child component here, you can see that we're extending from the component base class. All we have to do is simply pull in the pure component base class and extend from that. Now let's flip back to the browser and do the same thing. We'll click on the button from the parent component and see if the child component gets re-rendered. So there's our first render, and we see rendering from child. Now let's go ahead and click on the button from the parent component, and let's see if the child component gets re-rendered. And as you can see, there's no activity here in the console, even though we are updating the state of the parent component. So in this case, Pure Component has solved this issue. There was no need to re-render Posh because nothing was changing. Of course, if we click the Add Question Mark button for the Child Component, we can see here in the console that it is re-rendering. So the thing is, with Pure Component, it's not that it never updates or re-renders, but what it does is it asks the question, should I update? Should I re-render? And it does this by doing a comparison between the previous props or previous state, and the new props or new state. And it does this via a shallow comparison. So let's dig into that a little bit deeper. Like I said, when we extend from pure component, as opposed to component, pure component asks the question, should I update? Should I re-render? And that's what it brings to the table. It does this by default. If we had just extended from component, we can opt into the should component update behavior, but we have to write it in manually. So let's see how we would do that. There's a lifecycle method called should component update. And this lifecycle method is called with next props and next state. Since we're implementing this manually, what we would want to do in this case is check to see if there's been any changes in our props or state. If there has been a change, we would want this component to update. If there hasn't, we wouldn't. So what we need to return from should component update is a Boolean value, a true or false. Now what we've done so far is we simply had child component being rendered from our parent app component, but we didn't actually pass anything in. And even so, we saw that extending from the base component caused a re-render, because with the base component, should component update always returns true unless we come in here and do a manual check or manually override it. So just to show you an example, let's say that I passed into the child component a name prop, and I set that name prop to be this.state.name. So now every time I click this button, an exclamation mark is being added to the name Ginger, thereby changing the state. And so each time that's done, this name prop is going to be different. So what we can do in the child component inside of should component update, we can do a manual check. And should component update returns a Boolean value. In the case that it returns true, the component will update. In the case it returns false, it won't. Since we're being passed in this name prop, we can do a check and we can say this.props.name equals next props.name. If they're the same, we'll return false, right? Because we don't need it to re-render. However, if they are different, we can return true, which will cause a re-render. And we have to return this turn error expression. So now let's go ahead and let's check this out in the browser. When we update the name property in the parent app component state, the child component should re-render. So we click it, and we see rendering from child. Click it again, two, three, four, and so on. So in this case, we manually implemented or wrote should component update, where we could have simply used pure component to achieve the same result. Now, when working with pure component, there's something that we have to be careful of. And that has to do with this idea of shallow comparisons. So here we have our child component, and this is being passed a name prop, which is set to this.state.name. And this.state.name is a string value. And strings are primitives. So when it comes to a shallow comparison being made, this works perfectly. And if we flip back to the browser, as we can see, whenever the parent component is updated, the child component is re-rendering. Because this pure component is comparing that old string value to the new string value. But let's try something. Let's comment out this child component for a second. And let's write it down below. And instead of passing in a simple string for the name prop, just for the sake of example, 
let's pass in an object. And this object will have a name property. And we'll set it to be sporty. And actually, instead of passing this in as a name prop, let's call this person. So this will be the person object that we're passing in. Now, in the child component, instead of rendering this.state.name, we're going to render out this.props.person.name. And what do we think is going to happen when we update the state now in app? Well, let's take a look. Let's look down in the console. Rendering from child. Two, three, four. So check it out. Child component is actually re-rendering every time we update the state in our app component. But why is this? After all, the name property, sporty, hasn't changed. It's only the name property on the state that's changing in this component. And we are using pure component. So why is it re-rendering? Well, remember that pure component is doing a shallow comparison. And if we pass in an object here, every time this re-renders, a new object is being created. So what's being compared here is not the name property in the same object, but rather two different objects which point to two different places in memory. And because they're two different places in memory, they're going to be different every single time. So this is one of the things to look out for when you're using pure component. If we look at the React docs, it says, note, React pure components should component update only shallowly compares the objects. If these contain complex data structures, it may produce false negatives for deeper differences. Only extend pure component when you expect to have simple props in state. So in this video, we learned all about pure component in React. We learned that it can be used for performance optimization when we don't need a child component to re-render. We saw how with the regular base class component, should component update always returns true unless we manually write a should component update with whatever check we want to make. Pure component, on the other hand, automatically implements should component update for us. And then we saw that pure component is best used when we're comparing primitive values, as opposed to more complex structures like objects and arrays. So thanks for checking out this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, if you feel like you got something out of it, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be bringing you much more. See you next time.